Seen that 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 real life show enough silly can't think about nobody else but them all the time. Love, wake up in the morning, they're on your mind. Go to bed at night, they're on your mind. Can't wait to hear their voice. I got all kind of faces looking at me like, are you crazy? Some of y'all have forgot. <laughs> but I remember. <laughs> I remember. Hallelujah. What it's like to be in love. And you told that person, there's nobody like you. You're the best thing I've ever known. Hallelujah. Look at you. Woo! And then something happened. Then something happened. And it wasn't the apple. They wasn't the apple of your eye anymore. They became the cherry pit. Everything else but. But when you think of Jesus, hallelujah. Somebody said, when I think of his goodness, and all he's done for me. Yes. How he died on Calvary. Yes. Just to set me free. Ah, it's going to make somebody that hasn't done it in a while. Dance, 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 dance. I can't say the last part because I can't do it all night. <laughs> I can dance for a few minutes. But I can't dance all night. I can dance and rest a while and get back up, but I just can't, 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 can't. But when I think of his goodness, yeah. how, how he's blessed me in spite of myself. Yes, Lord. Hey, glory. I can dance, 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 dance all night. Thank God, thank God. So we're grateful to the Lord for our rising this morning and keeping us, blessing us. Moving in our lives. Hallelujah. We give honor to the pastor in his absence and the assistant pastor in his absence and their wives and uh, each of you in your respective places to our great deacons. We thank God for you, for our mothers and all of you. Amen. We praise God because God is God. Amen. And I like to tell folk, and you need to remember, you can't out God God. Amen. You cannot out God. God, God, God knows how to be God all by himself. Amen. You can't outdo him. He shut up. I'm preaching hard right now. You can't outdo it. Praise God. And you can't out, out, out. You just, mm, mm, mm. there were no words. There were no words. So with that being said, we're grateful again. We were called on yesterday and asked to speak this morning. So we thank God for this opportunity. Uh, because the Lord, we don't count it, you know, I'm posted. Somebody asked, are you preaching? I said, when they tell me. <laughs> when they tell me. When they ask me. Hallelujah. Because God got a message. And I've been a firm believer. When God's ready, I'm going to preach somewhere. <laughs> and leave it at that. So as you turn your Bibles to First Timothy. One second. Make sure. Yeah, should be First Timothy. <laughs> Make that Second Timothy the first chapter. I'm sorry. It's something when you turn your Bible, it's not reading what it's supposed to read. It's not saying what it's supposed to say. First Timothy, second chapter. Verses 2 through 7. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. <laughs> First chapter. 2 through 7. I'm not going to say it anymore. All right. And when you have it, y'all know what to say. Word. 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 To Timothy, my beloved son. 
Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers day and night, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I might be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and in thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We like to focus on verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Let us pray. God, we thank you for grace and kindness. We do ask you to speak to us and through us, Lord, that your name be glorified, that your people be edified. The devil will be horrified because the people of God are unified. And these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. So I want you to, you know me, I usually got a question or two. Tell somebody, stir up the gift that's within you. Then ask them, how am I supposed to stir it up? And tell them, from the bottom. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. So the thought is stir up the gift. That's within you. Subtopic from the bottom. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here who doesn't like gifts? Everybody likes gifts, right? While the seasonal myth perpetuated about gifts will be here in four months. When all little boys and girls will start being especially good because he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Oh, come on. Say, quote me. Say, know this. He knows if you've been bad or good. Then do what now? Be good for goodness. So be good for goodness sake. This guy's better than God. He's better than God. He sees you. <laughs> he doesn't watch over you. He just sees you. He knows. So you better be good for goodness sake. Because the kind of gift you get from this guy is entirely based on whether you've been good or not. <laughs> Good boys and girls get a gift. Bad boys and girls get a lump of coal. It's kind of hard to find some coal these days. <laughs> While that is a myth, in reality, no one has anything has to do anything special to get a gift. A gift is a gift is a gift. A gift that is, so, is something that is given and not earned. So you can't get a gift from him until you earn it. And you got to be good. And, and you only be good for about two weeks when they, you know, when they really started. When I was growing up, you know, right after Thanksgiving is when the, when the commercials come. But they'll, they'll start them in September. <laughs> Folks start trying to get good. Get good around your birthday. Do all those nice things. Mommy, you want me to do anything? You need anything done? So I'd show you I'm good so I can get a good gift. But Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. I like the way the contemporary English Bible says it. God doesn't take back the gifts he has given or disown the people he has chosen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. The study Bible says, 
God's gifts and call are under full warranty. Never canceled. Never rescinded. Now, now, now for those that have cars. You know, when you get your car, you get your warranty. And then they want you to get the extended warranty. Just in case them other things begin as they're going to do, run out and go bad. If you have the extended warranty, then everything's going to be all right because we'll be able to take care of it. And they've been calling and calling my mother about her car and the extended warranty's about to run out. She hangs up, but I, I want them to call back. They called back, and, and I, I, I want to listen to them so I can ask them a question. The question is simple. How is the warranty running out on a car that was totaled two years ago? Mm -hmm. wow. We don't own the car. The car went to the junkyard somewhere, been sold for parts, but you say, my extended warranty is about to run out. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. God has it so that once he gives you whatever it is he gives you, it doesn't run out. Hallelujah. hallelujah. God doesn't rescind it because you haven't been good or bad. God doesn't rescind it even because you didn't pray. Whatever gifts God gave you, he gave you. And the calling of God is right there. Now, the other good news about it is this. <laughs> you don't have to repent to get a gift. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Amen. Hey, glory. See, Amen. see, folk got it all messed up. They got it all twisted. But I've already told you, a gift is a gift is a gift. If you got to work for it, it's not a gift. If you got to do anything to deserve it, it's not a gift. Hallelujah. So, so, so. God will keep his call upon your life. He will also place gifts within you. The good news, again, you don't have to repent. What matters is what you do with your gift and about your calling. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, 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 I, I, I like to talk about the preachers. Because popular amongst the preachers is this. I didn't want to preach. I ran from my calling. It seems to give them credibility to be able to say they didn't want to preach. And God had to come get them and, and, and make them preach. And to validate how good, how God is and what God has done for them to make them heed the call, everybody didn't run from their calling. Amen. I'll say it again, everybody didn't run from their calling. Amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, and everybody wasn't Jeremiah, who was already a preacher, by the way, who got fed up and said in Jeremiah 29, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. <laughs> and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. In other words, I was weary trying to hold it in. I was weary trying to hold it back, and I couldn't. Praise God, sometimes you come to church, and you vow you ain't going to say nothing today. They're going to make me say a hallelujah. They're going to make me raise my hand. And you sit there. Try it sometime. Try to come in the presence of the God of God and just sit there. And think you're not going to do nothing. And I'm going to tell you way down deep inside you from somewhere. Hallelujah. The praise is going to come out. The praise is going to come up. Hallelujah. You can't help yourself. <laughs> hallelujah. You got to tell somebody. Look at what God has done. Isha. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, now, now. The youngest of the preaching McBride brothers in California, y'all don't know them. But when he was young, whenever somebody asked him, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, a bishop. 
<laughs> that was his determination, and that was what he wanted to be. I don't know if he uses it, but I know he's preaching. Praise God. He knew when he was a little boy, and they used to go around, around calling him, Hey, Bishop, how you doing? Praise God. Uh, when the elders used to always call him Bishop. Praise the Lord. In my case, I was called to preach when I was 15 years old. And I wanted to preach. I sat in church and I prayed a prayer at 15. And I said, Lord, if I ever preach or teach, I want to be able to do it from the college professor to the child. And then I was provoked to study by some mean folks. <laughs> they made me search the scriptures. They made me look and find it for myself. They embarrassed me in front of God and company until I was able to get it by myself. And then God sent me a great teacher to help me. Hallelujah. But because of my previous religious experience, I grew up a Jehovah's Witness for those that don't know. I didn't know what to do about this call. So I went to every minister in Greater Refuge Temple and inquired about their call to the ministry, which of course was different than mine. I thought that they were ministers so they knew everything. I didn't know that they didn't know anything. <laughs> they didn't know any much, much more than I knew. But I asked them. Well, see, the 15-year-old would get down and pray and hear thunder and see lightning. And I knew God was calling me. But because I wasn't part of the group, I was simply told, you ain't called to preach. And I said, okay. Because the ministers knew everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. The interesting thing about that is, well over 30 years later, the same person that told me I wasn't called to preach asked me, he said, you need to come to Indiana. We can use you. And this one will be our bishop, and, and you need to come on down. We, man, we could use you down there. And all I did was chuckle. I started to tell him, you're the person who told me all them years ago I wasn't called to preach. And now you want me to come to Indiana and to be one of the ministers down there. Yeah. I simply told him, I don't do snow. Because <laughs> God and I had a deal. Y'all y'all know, for those that know, they know. It wasn't until Papa died that I have to do snow again. Hallelujah. Likewise with gifts. Some gifts are manifested early in life. You hear your child say, where did you get that voice from? You see him draw a picture. My son drew, my son drew Mickey Mouse. No, Donald Duck, when he was four years old. He said, Daddy, I drew Donald Duck. I said, yeah, right. He said, I did, Daddy, I did. I said, do it again. And he did it again. I said, oh, listen, this boy got some talent. He got a gift. He got something that I don't have because I'm 67 years old still drawing stick people. <laughs> The, artist, the artistic part comes from Esther. The musical part came from me. But with these gifts, the thing you need to do when you recognize a gift in someone is to help them cultivate it. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Especially in the house of God. Mm -hmm. Jealousy has no place. When a person is using the gift, why, why, why they got this gift? And why they always singing? And why they always preaching? And why they always up? What about me? Well, get up and do something. Mm, amen. Jealousy has no place. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 12 and 31 tells us in cause A to covet the best gifts. Now, only you know what gift you think is the best gift. 
But this is a case where it tells you, cover them. Go after them. Seek them. You know, in the 70s, I, 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 the white folks used to do stuff different than us. They still do. <laughs> but I went to the full gospel businessmen and they said, anybody want the Holy Ghost? Come stand over here. Anybody want spiritual gifts? Come stand over here. So I watched my Baptist preacher friend go stand in that line for folk that wanted the Holy Ghost. And he didn't tarry one second. He didn't holler, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, 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 say it fast, say it slow, hold on, let go, don't let them go till they bless you. He didn't do none of that. The man threw his arms around him and inside of a minute, he was speaking in tongues and it just blew my mind. Aww. I said, wait a minute. So I went home and I got Earl Robinson and Marsha and I called them over. I said, I said let me tell y'all something right now. I said, I'm getting ready to pray. And when I get through praying, y'all going to receive the Holy Ghost. Because I was all straight up. Hallelujah. And I prayed. And they all start speaking in tongues right then, right there. God proved to me right then you don't have to work for a gift. <laughs> We're teaching it wrong. And then the preachers, back to them. Preachers used to love to tell folk, especially you sisters, Sister God won't give you any more than give me. <laughs> so if you got three spiritual gifts, I got to have four. God won't give and I've heard it, I've heard it now. Okay, I'm not going to say where I heard it. But I heard it. Praise God. God won't give you any more than he gives me. My job is to recognize that gift that you have. If I recognize, and when I recognize that you have the gift of healing, I need to make sure that you up here laying hands on somebody. That's the only way that gift's going to get cultivated. If I recognize you have the gift of interpretation of tongues, then you need to be up here interpreting some tongues. Amen. But God won't give you no more than give me. Because I'm the preacher. I'm God's man. God's servant. God's mouthpiece. And so it has to start with me. No preacher. It starts with your people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, 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 so, so, so cultivate the gift you see in someone. Now I want to tell you, don't despise your gift. That's not the one I wanted. <laughs> For the, oh yeah. For those that know, I always wanted the gift of interpretation of tongues. God gave it to Esther. I was the one, Lord, was getting up at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, go pray. You, 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 you can't pray by the bed. You can't pray in the bed. Get up, go in that other room and pray. And then in the morning she said, you know, the Lord gave me such a very sweet dream. God did this and God did that. Tongues come to the church and she writing me notes saying what God said. And I used to read them till the Lord got me. Wasn't my gift. God told you. You stand up. You say what God God told you to say. Praise God. And people are like, well, you know, y'all won. Not when I'm the only one God's getting up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we one then, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't we one then? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Recognize the gifts. Sometimes, saints, you feel stagnant. You've been coming to Bethel for how many years? <laughs> how many decades? You got your favorite seat, your favorite spot? At least you're not telling folk they can't sit there. <laughs> I was at a certain church and I sat in a seat and the sister told me, you're sitting in my seat. So I looked at the seat like this. <laughs> and she said, what you looking for? I said, I'm looking for your name. Did you say it's your seat? It's God's seat. It's God's house. Amen. It's God's place. The house of the Lord. But it's my seat, God. And nobody else better not sit in it. 
Sometimes you feel sluggish. I just don't feel like it today. Just don't feel like clapping my hands. Just don't feel like raising my hands and singing. And don't tell me to tell my neighbor. And I'm so sick of tell your neighbor. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Tell him this. And I don't feel like doing none of that. Well, saint, well, well, brother, well, sister. What if God said, I don't feel like blessing you today? Mm -hmm. I'm going to wake you up today and that's it. Your whole day going to be messed up. From the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, nothing's going to go right all day long. So I can show you I don't feel like it today. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then we, Lord, please, where are you, Jesus? I need some help. Well, Paul tells Timothy, this faith was first in your mother, your grandma. Then it was in your mother. Guess what, boy? It's in you too. Stuff runs in families. Hallelujah. You had the prophets and the sons of the prophets preaching ran in the family. You see, even today, I tell people I come from a long line of cooks and preachers. Folk can cook, and they can preach. Praise God. I couldn't help myself. I had to be one because it was in my lineage. Nothing I could do about it. Oh, yeah, I could have done something about it, but I'm in bigger trouble. Hallelujah. So, when you get down to the point when you're feeling sluggish, when you get down to the point you don't feel like praising God, when you get down to the point when I get so sick and tired of y'all telling me to tell my neighbor and touch five people and run all day body in your aisle and all those nice little silly things that they're doing today. When you get tired of all that, you need to stir it up. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift. That's within you. Now, 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 you can't stir it with a fork. You can't stir it with tongues. You remember when we used to have the Hershey's chocolate? Mm. And you pour it in the milk yeah. and it settled at the bottom? You couldn't stir that with a fork. <laughs> you couldn't stir that with, with, with tongs. You had to get a what? Why? Because all the ingredients had done what? Settled on the bottom. Well, 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 you stop praying. You stop praising. You stop studying. You stop coming to the house of God. You came here sitting like a bump on the log and all your ingredients have set up to the bottom. And you need to stir up the gift that's within, that's within you. You need by God's grace to remember the songs and Lord. When my faith goes weak, yes. let me see something thou hast done for me. You need to stir it up. Hallelujah. Get yourself a Holy Ghost spoon. Get yourself a ladle. Hallelujah. Begin to stir it up. Now, 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 you can't stir it from the top. Who stirred it from the top doesn't get to that stuff that's down in the bottom. You need to stick that spoon down in there and begin to stir it. And you can't just stir it slow. You got to get a vortex going. You got to stir it, stir it, stir it. Until that stuff, you're looking at the bottom, it's still something down there. You know, I got to stir it a little more. Hallelujah. So when you don't feel right, stir up your hallelujahs. And praise God, God will do something. When you don't feel right, stir up a thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God will do something. When you don't feel right, you can do like the old saint said. If I can't do nothing else, I wave my hand till I feel it. Yes. Stir up your gift. Amen. Stir it up. And stir it. From where? The bottom. Hallelujah. Because when you get it all mixed up, that's right. That chocolate syrup you taste so good then. <laughs> you put that straw in there and blow them bubbles. Oh, y'all remember. Hallelujah. 
So I want to encourage you today. Stir it up. Hallelujah. Somebody today needs to stir up your gift. Amen. You've been quiet too long. Amen. You've been looking too long. Amen. Hallelujah. You've been sitting too long. The song says you've been sitting down too long. God can't use you sitting down. Hallelujah. You've got to stand up and be counted. Alex Graffin said, thank God I'm one of them today. Hallelujah. I'm one of them today. Hey, 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 hey. Even right where you are right now, I dare you to stir it up. Hallelujah. That's saw right where you are. I dare you to stir it up. Hey, glory. I dare you to reach down in the bottom where your old praise used to be and stir it up. I dare you to reach down in the bottom where your hallelujah used to be and stir it up. I dare you to reach down in the bottom and remember what God has done and stir it up. You won't be the same anymore. You can't be the same. You can't be the same because you have stirred up the gift that's within you. God bless you this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Does anybody need their gift stirred up today? 